and welcome to the table this week. Today we turn to the next line of the Lord's Prayer, which we find in Matthew 6, the 12th verse, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Some churches use that language, others pray using the word sin, and at Zion we pray forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Regardless of the word choice, the meaning of the phrase is the same. As I carefully considered this phrase, there are a few things that stick out in my mind. One is that we don't culturally talk about forgiveness very much. Another is that we're forgiven before we even ask. And the third thing that I think about is that it's really interesting to me that Jesus offers this prayer saying, as we have forgiven, not as we will forgive. So let's just briefly explore these three thoughts and I pray that as we explore these few things about this line of prayer, that you'll find even more insights of your own. I want us to think for a moment about the last time you apologized to someone. I don't necessarily mean a quick, I'm sorry because you bumped into somebody in a store while passing them, but rather the last time you offered a sincere apology for something that you had done wrong. Now, perhaps it was a family member or a good friend, but when you apologized, how did that person respond? Often when we apologize, we say, I'm really sorry for fill in the blank. And the response is, it's okay, or you don't have to apologize for that. We completely skip over the language of forgiveness. Now, although sometimes folks will say, please forgive me for, we usually tend to say, I'm sorry instead. And usually the response is not, I forgive you, but rather, it's okay. When I hear this dialogue with my children, I tell them, no, it's not okay. It's not okay that your sister hit you, or it's not okay that your brother tore the head off of your Barbie doll. It's better to say, I forgive you. In life, people need to hear that they are forgiven. To say, I forgive you to someone allows for healing, and for moving forward, whereas it's okay can just come across as being brushed off or as if the apology is just being dismissed. So when we pray this line of the Lord's Prayer, we can be reminded to offer people forgiveness by using the language of forgiveness and saying, I forgive you. And additionally, in our hearts, minds, and souls, we can listen for the voice of God who says, I forgive you to each of us. Which brings me to my next thought about this line. Before we even ask for forgiveness, we know as Christians that God has already forgiven us. So then that kind of makes you wonder, what's the point? And yet, remember we talked about the Lord's Prayer as a formula for how we can outline all of our prayers. And Jesus gives us this formula of prayer, including asking for forgiveness. Now, some would say forgiveness from God is free and all you have to do is ask for it. But then that leaves me wondering, if it's free, why do I have to do something in order to get it? I once heard someone describe the free gifts of God like a present. Someone gives you a present that's all wrapped up and ready to go. Remember, you know, Christmas wasn't that long ago and perhaps you received some presents. And they've already handed it to you, so it's yours. You have it and you possess it. You already have the present. But what would happen if you just never opened the present. You'd still be glad that the person thought of you and that they gave you a present. Maybe you'd really enjoy looking at the wrapping paper or the gift bag that it came out came in, but you'd also be missing out on fully enjoying that gift if you never unwrapped it. You'd miss out on the fullness of the present that was given to you. So when I'm asking God for forgiveness, I'm already forgiven. Jesus doesn't have me praying asking for forgiveness because God's going to withhold forgiveness from me until I ask. And we should probably remember that when other people uh, do something and we think, oh, I'm just waiting for them to ask me to forgive them before I forgive them. God doesn't do that. God doesn't wait around saying, well, I know Laura did that, but I'm not going to forgive her until she comes and asks me. But Jesus includes this in the formula for prayer that I ask for forgiveness because I need to ask, not in order to receive the forgiveness, but I need to ask for myself. 
When I ask for forgiveness or when you ask for forgiveness, it helps us to more fully understand God's love and grace. And it allows us to more fully enjoy the gift of forgiveness that God has given to us. Which brings me to my third insight about this line of prayer. Not only does Jesus format the prayer so that we ask for forgiveness and enjoy the fullness of the gift, but he also adds in a line about forgiving others. Whenever I pray this line of prayer, I'm reminded of the words of Jesus that are found in Matthew 5. There, Jesus says that if we come to the altar to present a gift before God, and don't think just about um, a sacrifice from Bible times or offering up a monetary gift, but also think about gifts of prayer and worship, the gift of giving our own selves before God. So Jesus says we come to the altar with our gift, whatever that gift is, and we get there and we realize we're at odds with a brother or sister, then what we should do is leave the altar and first go make amends with that brother or sister. If we pray and we know that we're already forgiven before we ask, and then we ask and we're assured that we're forgiven and we enjoy the fullness of that forgiveness, then how much more should we be willing to freely offer forgiveness to others? Yet that's not an easy task. Some people just get under our skin. And some people are repeat offenders of the same sin against us. And there gets to a point where you're like, mm, do I really have to forgive them? Remember Peter asked Jesus how many times he has to forgive someone before he can stop forgiving them? And Jesus replies and says, you can't ever stop forgiving them. You're going to forgive uh, until the completeness of all time forever and ever. It's really hard. And yet, Jesus tells us that when we come and offer this prayer and we ask God for forgiveness and enjoy the good gift of being forgiven ourselves, then we should also be willing to forgive others. And not only that, but we should forgive them even before we come and ask for forgiveness in our prayer. I could be wrong, but I think that when we're praying and asking for forgiveness, if there's someone that we need to forgive and we're really struggling with it, that we could come, ask God for forgiveness, enjoy the fullness of that gift, and also talk to God about our struggle. I do this sometimes in my own prayer life. I tell God, I really know that I should leave right now and go make amends first. But I'm also having a really hard time forgiving this person, and this is why. And this is what I found out. When I'm struggling with forgiving someone, it usually has less to do with that other person and more to do with my own faith walk. And besides that, God already knows I'm struggling. So when I'm honest before God about that struggle, then God can meet me in that struggle and help me through it. And get me to the place where I'm able to go and offer forgiveness. Now that's a lot to consider in a very short time about this little line of prayer. And we could also cover a lot more too. I'd really enjoy hearing from you. Uh, some of you send me emails every now and then sharing additional insights and thoughts, and I really appreciate that. I like the dialogue that we can open up as we share around the table, so I hope to hear from you. But I'd also like to leave us with a challenge for the week ahead. As we format our prayers or as we offer our prayers daily to God, let's include daily asking God for forgiveness, and then also looking for opportunities to extend that freely given forgiveness to those who are around us. I hope you all have a blessed week and I look forward to seeing you next time around the table.